Okay, so let's go to the deep Dhamma session uh, of the program. We pay homage to the Blessed One, the Supreme Buddha. Sadhu, Sadhu. We pay homage to our teacher, Lukasami Nuhasi. Sadhu, Sadhu. So if you can remember the sutta, we were discussing, what is the name of the sutta? Kundaliya sutta. Kundaliya sutta. And the Supreme Buddha was teaching this beautiful Dhamma to the wanderer named Kundaliya. And Buddha explains, uh, about the sense restraint and then the sense restraint leads to the three kinds of good conduct and the three kinds of good conduct leads to the uh, four, uh, four kinds of mindfulness meditation. And we were learning about the four kinds of mindfulness meditation. Mm. And the first part of that is the uh, <clears throat> body. observing the body as body, uh, the Kaya Nupassana uh, section. So how many meditations did we learn? Four Bhante. So far, uh, what are they? Breathing, um, the posture, um, mm -hmm. the activities, and the impurities of the body. Yeah, so uh, Anapanasati meditation, Iriyapata meditation, Sampajanya meditation, Asubha meditation, right? Those are the four things and all of them are uh, about the true nature, understanding the true nature of the body. Today we are going to learn another meditation that is also uh, under Kaya Nupassana, like this, as Buddha explained, uh, this meditation is called the, uh, the, uh, the mindfulness or contemplating the, the true nature of the elements. So we are going to use the we're going to use two suttas to learn about that. And this is the Dhatu Vibhanga Sutta. Okay, so. <clears throat> we used another sutta. Can somebody share the Satipatthana Sutta?
Mahasati Pakhtana Sata Bhante Om Jasak. Oh no, I got it. I got it. So. Okay, here it is. So this is from uh, the Kaya Gata Sati Sutta. We, we uh, learned the uh, about the, the true nature of the elements. If you can read from here. Oh, that's the portions. Yeah. Yeah, this is how the Buddha explained about the, the introduction part of the meditation. Today we are going to learn about that in detail. So can somebody please read? Okay, Bante, may I? Mm -hmm. Okay, furthermore, a mendicant examines their own body, whatever its placement or posture, according to the elements. In this body, there is the earth element, the water element, the fire element, and the air element. It's as if a deft butcher or butcher's apprentice were to kill a cow and sit down at the crossroads with the meat cut into portions. In the same way, a mendicant examines their own body, whatever its placement or posture, according to the elements. In this body, there is the earth element, the water element, the fire element, and the air element. As they meditate like this, diligent, keen, and resolute, memories and thoughts of the lay life are given up their mind becomes stilled internally. It settles, unifies, and becomes immersed in samadhi. That too is how a mendicant develops mindfulness of the body. So, so that is another way of developing the wisdom uh, by practicing the Kaya Nupassana, a mindfulness practice. And now we are going to learn about that in detail. So did you see here that the Buddha was explaining in this body, there is earth element, the water element, the fire element, and the air element, right? And for the uh, for today's meditation, you practice that, right? Yeah, that's that's directly from uh, from this sutta, the Atavibhanga sutta. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so... Now we are going to learn about, yeah, like you now everything is in the sutta. We don't need to add anything, right? We don't need to add our opinions, personal opinions, interpretations, because everything is in the sutta. So before we learned about the, the basic uh, instructions for the meditation, it's also from an original discourse called the Kaya Gata Sati Sutta, the mindfulness about the body. And now we, the, we are going to learn the, the detailed instructions about the meditation. It's also from a discourse, original discourse, and the name of this discourse is Dhatu Vibhanga Sutta. Okay? So, very straightforward, very clear instructions. And also, we are going to learn about the, the benefits of the meditation um, and the results of uh, the advanced practice. Um, can somebody read this part? Can I read one thing? Mm -hmm. What bhikkhu is the earth element? The earth element may be either internal or external. What is the internal earth element? Whatever internally belongs to oneself is solid, solidified, and clung to, that is head hairs, body hairs, nails, teeth, skin, flesh, sinews, bones, bone marrow, kidneys, heart, liver, diaphragm, spleen, lungs, intestines, mesentery, contents of the stomach, feces, or whatever else internally belonging to oneself is solid, solidified, and clung to. This is called the internal earth element. Now, both the internal element, both the 
internal earth element and the external earth element or simply earth element. And that should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom thus, this is not mine, this I'm not, this is not myself. When one sees it thus as it actually is with proper wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with the earth element and makes the mind dispassionate towards the earth element. Very good. Sound, sound. Did you see that amazing explanation about how to do the meditation? Yeah, yes, contemplating, yeah contemplating on all those uh, solid uh, parts of the body and uh, also developing wisdom to see that they, there is this internal earth element and all these parts are included in the internal earth element and also there is an external earth element and both these internal and the external earth elements are simply earth elements. So that is the extent of wisdom that we one needs to cultivate and as a result of seeing um, that all these, uh, the both the earth element are simply earth element uh, as they are not mine, uh, I am not, not myself. With uh, proper wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with earth element. So that is what we need to gain, becoming disenchanted with earth element. Right now, what we have is the attachment to the earth element. How do, how do we attach to that element? We take the earth element as mine, I am, myself, right? And um, we can see that is very clearly uh, the danger of this attachment. And this attachment of mine, myself, I am, leads to the the, the arising of many defilements. We get angry. Um, we, we try to fight with others. You know, we insult others. We try to protect ourselves in, in many different ways, um, harming others, destroying others. It's all because of this attachment uh, by not understanding that it is just the earth element that there is nothing here to consider as mine, I am, and not myself. And the mind become dispassionate towards the earth element. So then you're going to see uh, it is just as a part of the nature. And see, it, there is a beautiful sutta about what happened when you are uh, um, mindfulness and wisdom are developed to a very advanced level. These are, these are the results, okay? We go to a different sutta to learn about that. So this is Mahatipada Sutta. I just shared that. Okay, so Buddha teaches here what happens uh, when the mind is developed with that meditation. It, it's interesting, right? So everything is in the suttas. Okay, here. You see here? Uh, and also, uh, we are going to learn, uh, before learning the results and the benefits of the meditation, we are going to learn another important thing. If we, if we go back, to, uh, if you go back to that explanation about, okay, so all these hard parts of the body, what is it called? Your earth element. Again? Your earth element. Earth element. The interior earth element. No, what have I highlighted here? This is called the interior earth element. Yeah. So all these hard parts of the body are called interior earth element. Not just the earth element. Interior earth element. And then... Do you remember the Buddha went on to teach the interior earth element and the exterior earth element are just the earth element? Do you remember that part? 
This is from Mahatipada Bhumasutta. The greater discourse on the foot elephant's footprint. That's the Mahatipada Bhumasutta. So now we are going to learn about the in exterior earth element from this. Okay, can somebody read? Yes, I can read Bhante. Okay, Aaron. There comes a time when the exterior water element flares up. At that time, the exterior earth element vanishes. So for all its great age, the earth element will be revealed as impermanent, liable to end, vanish, and perish. What then of this ephemeral body appropriated by craving rather than take to it rather than take it to be i or mine or i am they still just consider it to be none of these things okay very good so now do you have an idea about the exterior earth element now what happened in in europe these days in germany Floods, Bhante. Flooding. Yeah. So that is that is that water flowing, right? It makes the exterior earth element, parts of the exterior earth element disappear. That is what is explained here. See? When ex exterior water element flares up, the exterior earth element vanishes. Is washed away, lands are washed away, roads are swept away by the current, right? So Buddha teaches even this great exterior earth element, that's, that's, that means this earth, great earth, that's the exterior element, earth element. And these, all the buildings, houses, they are also made up of four great elements, and right? All the solid parts of that are included in the exterior earth element and they are washed away, swept away by the water. So then the Buddha teaches, even if this great earth, parts of the great earth disappear due to the, 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 the tsunami, the great floods, right? Like this. So if that is the case with this huge earth element, even the huge earth element is impermanent. Why do you still cling to this small body that contains very small part of the same earth element? Why do you still cling to it? And Buddha asks, why do you uh, still cling to it, taking it to be mine? I am myself. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? That's, that's, the, that's the Buddha's question here. Why, why do you crave? Rather than take it to be I or mine or I am, they still just consider it to be, right? Why do we still consider that this is I am, this is mine, this is myself? That's the question. Did you see how the exterior earth element disappears? When it floods? That's the impermanence. And if you like to learn more about disappearing the earth element, exterior earth element, there is a beautiful sutta you can read about it. You'll see if you can find it. Can somebody share the um Sapta Suryuga Manasutta, rising of the seven suns. Oh, people talk about uh, a lot about the uh, the global warming, right? Okay, here I found it. This is the Buddha's prediction about global warming. And we are still not even in the beginning of that 
prediction. But this is where we are heading. This is where the whole world is heading. Okay, this is a beautiful sutta. Everyone should, should read this sutta and understand the extraordinary knowledge of the Buddha. This is, this is the prediction of the Buddha about the destruction of the great earth. And also this is the disappearance of the exterior earth element. Has anybody, uh, has everybody read this sutta? Everybody here? No? Okay, some, for some is the first time. Harry is yeah. the first time, right? So you will yes, be amazed. Bante. Yes, Bante. Huh? First time. First time. First time. Okay, you will be amazed about the Buddha's extraordinary knowledge. Okay, and uh, there's drought. Like, like science even like haven't like hasn't come to the close of it. Like there mm -hmm. is no a, any science that um, that is um, like compared to the Buddha's extraordinary knowledge discoveries and all these things. And this is an amazing prediction. I think all the scientists should read this sutta. <laughs> yes. So, uh, and yeah, they can understand that Buddha has already seen everything. He has already seen. We don't need to do so many research. You can just uh, give away that money to the poor people, you know. There's so much money you research on projects to find these very like small things but buddha has already done the research and he has discovered everything we are still struggling to find small parts of those things okay that's sad but this is uh, the amazing knowledge of the buddha who is going to read this Bhante, i can read it okay Okay, thank you. So I have heard at one time the Buddha was staying near Visali in Ambali, Ambapali's wood. There the Buddha addressed the mendicants. Mendicants, venerable sir, they replied. The Buddha said this, mendicants, conditions are impermanent. Conditions are unstable. Conditions are unreliable. This is quite enough for you to become disillusioned, dispassionate and freed from and freed regarding all conditions. Okay, so let me uh, explain something here. So all conditions are impermanent means, condition means like everything in the world, in, like simply, that's the meaning. Buddha teaches everything in the world is impermanent, unstable, unreliable. Do you see that every day? Yes, Pante. Houses, buildings, mm -hmm. cars, you know, vehicles, lives, money, pets, roads, what is what else? People's dreams, <laughs> you know, everything is impermanent, unstable, unreliable. Weather. Huh? Weather as well. Weather, furniture, everything. Uh, lands, properties, you know. This is quite enough for you to become disillusioned, dispassionate, and freed, liberated. Buddha teaches just by understanding how things are impermanent, unstable, and unreliable. Just by seeing that, understanding that is enough for you to become de detached from these things. The more you go after those things, the more pain and suffering will follow you. Because you want, you build attachments towards these impermanent, unstable things, right? And they are going to leave you for sure. Sooner or later, they, they are going to leave you. Because, but because of your lack of understanding of the true nature of the things, and because of your attachment and craving for these things, you are going to cry. You are going to... Be very sad. You're going to be stressed. And Buddha didn't want people to experience that sadness. Buddha didn't like 
like that sadness. So Buddha taught, it is enough to become dispassionate and liberated from all the impermanent, unstable, unreliable things. That's the meaning of this introduction out of the Sutta. Isn't that a very wise statement? That yes. is a very wise, very yes, wise yeah. statement. Yeah. Now, Buddha is going to teach about this great earth. So don't forget that we are learning about the external earth element and also the impermanence of the external earth element, right? And so we are going to learn about that. So the main point here is even if this um, huge external earth element is impermanent, so let alone these small parts of the earth element that are considered mine, I am, and myself. <clears throat> okay, you can continue. continue. Mm -hmm. um, Sindaru, the king of mountains, is 84,000 leagues long and 84,000 leagues, leagues wide. It sinks 84,000 leagues below the ocean and rises 84,000 leagues above. There comes a time when after a very long period has passed, the rain doesn't fall. For many years, many hundreds and many thousands, many hundreds of thousands of years, no rain falls. When this happens, the plants and seeds, the herbs, grass and big trees wither away and dry up and are no more. So impermanent are conditions, so unstable, so unreliable, this is quite enough for you to become disillusioned, dispassion, dispassionate, and freed regarding all conditions. There comes okay. a time. Okay, so let me pause here. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> so now Buddha is talking about our future. Okay, future of this earth, future of the humans. So Buddha is talking about after many years, many hundreds of years, many thousands of years, many hundreds of thousand years no rain falls, okay? So, uh, okay, here. There comes a time when after a very really long period has passed, the rain doesn't fall. Has this time yet reached? Are we there now? No, Bhante. No, this is still further. It's after many, many years in the future, this will happen because it's still, the rain falls, right? Mm -hmm. But this is the time about the rain doesn't fall. There is no rain at all. So, but this will definitely happen after many, many years. So humans still will be there. And those are the kind of unfortunate human beings that are going to be on earth at that time. Are you going to come back to the human world at that time to experience this? We don't want. Do you have any plan to come back to the human world? Trying hard to become a Sotapan. Okay, then you have to go to the heaven until you are liberated, fully liberated from this cycle. This is also a cycle. Don't forget that. This is not the first time that the earth is going to disappear. This is a cycle too. So humans... And all beings are also in a cycle, going from life to life. Earth is also in a cycle. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not about millions of years, trillions of years, or whatever the, uh, the years that the scientists calculate. It's uncalculable time period. It's such a long, long, long time. So the Earth is in a cycle. There is a formation of the Earth and the destruction of the Earth. And... Buddha has explained about the formation of the earth that within one cycle, okay? So it, ha it keeps happening, keeps happening. And this is about the destruction of the earth. This is how it's going to happen. And now we are talking about the global warming at a time when even this doesn't have it's not here. Mm -hmm. We're still talking about a global warming. Still, when there is raining. But Buddha teaches, there will be a time the rain does not fall. 
what happens. I think before uh, the plants, seeds, herbs, grass, and big trees wither away and dry up and are no more, I think by this time, the, all the humans are gone. No humans are on earth, right? Because now, like without water, humans can't exist. Correct, yeah. Yeah, so by this, all the humans are dead and there is nobody on earth, maybe on other earths, but not mm -hmm. in this earth. And they are all born in other worlds, different world systems according to their karma. And this is also interesting. Buddha teaches the same, same, about the same scenario, king of mountains. I think maybe this is the mountain that Titanic got hit. We don't know, but that's an iceberg, mm. right? That's this, iceberg. <laughs> so something like this, it, it's uh, in other suttas. Oh no, here, Buddha teaches, it sinks 84,000 leagues below the ocean. So it is. it should be in ocean somewhere, right? Uh, so, and 84,000 leagues above it, right? So, it's a huge mountain. And Buddha teaches in, in a different sutta named Gaddula Baddha Sutta in the Sangyutta Nikaya. Uh, the, the dog tied to a post, that is the name of the sutta. Buddha teaches even the great mountain, the king of mountains, Sineru, will disappear one day. Okay, will disappear one day. No more. It will be flattened, but still the journey of the beings in this sansara will not come to an end. Buddha uses this same information about the, uh, the king of mountains. That is so um, Complicated. It's a complicated journey. Okay, so now there are no plants, no seeds, no herbs, no grass, no big trees, and everything is withered away, dried up, and normal. Why? Everything, all the conditioned things are impermanent, unstable, unreliable. That is the truth realized by the Buddha. And if we, the lesson here, the message here is, if, if somebody tries to find lasting happiness based on these things, relying on these things, they're going to fail. Everybody who is going to find lasting happiness based on these things are going to fail. Why? Because this is the nature of these conditioned things. They cannot guarantee you lasting happiness. Their inherent nature is the impermanence. Mm -hmm. Unreliable nature. It's not the fault of those things, right? It's the fault of the ignorant mind. It still clings to these things. That's, that's the big mistake. Okay, so still we are with the, with the sun. With this sun we are seeing here right now. We see the sun. And... Um, but the... The heat is very high, no rain, no, no plants on the earth, just, just, like, um, just like a desert, right? The whole earth is like a desert. Where are the buildings and all these things? No, nobody is using those. Buildings are standing. <laughs> malls, shops, shopping malls, everything standing there. All the buildings and all the lands the people were fighting to own, right? They were killing others. Okay, this is not your land, this is our land. This is, this is your, not your country, this is our country. People were fighting. Yeah. Now, there is the land, where are the humans? This is the truth. This is the truth. Okay, now who is going to read the next part of the sutta? May I read Bhante? Mm -hmm. There comes a time when after a very long period has passed, a second sun appears. When this happens, the streams and pools wither away and dry up and are no more. So 
impermanent are conditional. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let me explain here something. Sad, sad. Um, <clears throat> so this happens all the the plants, seeds, herbs, grass, and big trees wither away and dry up and no more. It happens under this same sun that we are seeing today, right? And then Buddha teaches a second sun appears after a long time. And with, when the second sun appears, the streams and pools with the away and dry up and no more. First, all the plants and trees disappear. And then the streams, rivers, pools, and all those things dry up. And I really like this, uh, uh, to repeat this part. Why? Why that happens? So impermanent are condition thing so unstable so unreliable this is quite enough for you to become this illusion dispassionate and freed regarding all conditioned things this is the only solution it's just develop your wisdom to understand the impermanent nature of all conditioned things unstable nature unreliable nature of all the conditioned things and be liberated from them this is the only solution otherwise we don't know how many times we are going to be in such a high raised buildings like the Maya in Miami, the high raised building, the apartment building just collapsed while people were sleeping, right? We don't know how many times we are going to die buried under the concrete, under the rubbers, because that has happened to us many times in this long journey of sansara and it will continue to happen to us until we are liberated from all these conditioned things. Isn't that sad? What is happening to human beings and other beings when, when they travel in this sansara? Isn't that sad? Extremely Don't... sad. Yeah. See how people are disappointed and frustrated and also like the suffering due to the separation of loved ones, separation of below things, all the dreams disappear in, like in an instant. Just imagine while sleeping, okay, while sleeping this happens, it collapse, okay? And you open your eyes. You are not in that world. You open your eyes in a different world. Why? When we die like that, some people are born in hell. When they open their eyes, they couldn't open eyes in the human world. The last time they were sleeping, then building collapsed. And they opened the eyes in a different world. They some people open the eyes in hell as hell beings. They have been reborn as hell beings. Buddha, only the Buddha saw this. The people are just talking about the building and how, was, how it was built, what kind of concrete was used, what kind of metal was used, and this and that. And Buddha forgot all of those. And Buddha, saw, Buddha wanted to see where are they now? Everybody who was sleeping, where are they now? That's what Buddha wanted to see because that is the most important thing. And Buddha saw when such a thing happens due to flood, due to uh, the fire, due to an earthquake, due to tsunami or anything like that, due to an accident. Buddha saw what happens. Some beings open their eyes in the next life. When they open, they are hell beings. They have been reborn. Karma took them there. Some, some beings, they open their eyes. As animals, that is their next life. Now they are animals. Some beings open their eyes in the next life. As ghostly beings, they are ghosts. And some fortunate beings who made good karma, practicing giving and sharing, generosity, volunteering, helping others, practicing kindness and patience. They have very few beings are open their eyes as human babies again 
but they still have to face the same tragedy in the sansara again as humans and some are born in heaven when they open their eyes they are gods and goddesses like how many times this is going to happen to us so that is why buddha's compassion is called the limitless compassion buddha buddha just discovered the area that we need to focus on right it's there is otherwise there is no end there is no end just talking about concrete free bars this and that you know there is no end if we talk about how we are how we get reborn if we talk about craving attachment ignorance four noble truths if we talk about the impermanence of conditioned things if we try to understand them if we develop wisdom to see the true nature that is the solution that is the solution that is the only solution so we talked about the second sun uh all the water disappears with that water of the streams and pools okay and then what happens now can you imagine the heat when this happens the like this is the heat of one sun okay now we are experiencing <laughs> with all okay it's just, um the temperature is in 3 degrees you know it's so hot and people are dying remember some people like uh, where was that was BC. that Vancouver BC yeah BC yeah bc like mm. i think close to 100 people died right yeah over yeah like due to uh, the heat heat fire yeah it's just one one sun under one sun we are still living in so this is, we we cannot imagine the heat when the second sun appears right and now buddha is buddha so even more to our future who is going to read something i can try there comes a time when after a very long period passed a third sun appears when this happens the great rivers the ganges yamuna atiravati sarabhu and mahi wither away and dry up and are no more so impermanent are conditions yeah so unstable so unreliable this is quite enough for you to become this illusion this passionate and free regarding all conditions sounds oh, sounds so has anybody seen ganges river ganges yamuna achiravati sarabhu mahi anybody here yeah i've seen ganges yes. and yamuna yeah ganges oh. yes india ganges uh huh yeah how about other other uh, great rivers Sarabhu, Mahi, Achiravati. No, Don't they have no. the names changed to the current day? Yeah, Ganges like, is the same, right? Yeah, Sarabhu. Ganga and Yamuna are Ganga, the same. Ganga, Yamuna. Yeah, but Achiravati and Sarabhu and Mahi. Sarabhu. I have... Huh? Sarabhu. Never heard of them. Yeah, I haven't. They might have changed the names, Bante. Yeah, but they are the great. What are the great rivers now in India? Like you know, you have Sangam, Sangam. What 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 kind of rivers? Brahmaputra. Um, four, four rivers. What are they? Uh, Ganga, Yamuna, Achiravati. Yeah, I'm, Bra- I'm Brahmaputra. But the modern names, like modern names. Brahmaputra. Um, Brahmaputra. You know they have that uh, big festival there. Um, yeah. What is that? What is the name of that? that everybody goes into the water thinking that is a blazing water holy water ben do you remember that in banaras that's a place all sadhus all the sadhus go there i think it's coming um every like 50 years or whatever like a kumbha mela one thing kumbha mela kumbha mela ceremony 
Kumbh Mela ceremony, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so they plunge into the Ganges, river Ganges. Yeah, mm. so these great rivers, what happens to them? Will, will um, people believe that one day the river Ganges will wither away and dry up? <laughs> Nobody will believe and people say, no, it is a goddess. How come, how, how come that happens to a goddess? It is permanent, everlasting. Don't say that it's going to disappear one day. No, it's going to happen because it's a part of the nature. This heat is um, so much so that the water cannot stay. So that's the appearance of the third sun. There are no humans to witness this when this happens. Bante, the waterfalls in Sri Lanka, uh, we visited through two years ago, March. They mm. dried up already. <laughs> no water. Yeah. And then we were told that, uh, oh, this is the waterfalls, but there's no water. No waterfall. Yeah, it's funny. happening. Yeah. It's happened. And in the future, so you, okay, how about. Uh, uh, what is that famous waterfall uh, in, in, in Ontario? Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls. Niagara. What happened to Niagara Falls? Now people are very happy. Niagara. And they, huh? Mm -hmm. It will disappear. <laughs> it will disappear. Yes. It will happen to everything. Okay, when you go to see Niagara Falls next time, contemplate on this, okay? <laughs> this huge amount of water is going to be mm. permanent and this is not... This is not permanent. This is a part of the impermanent world, okay? So don't cling to it, okay? <laughs> so don't take that many pictures. Then you attach to the pictures. Okay, who is going to read next part? I can read some. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I to read some answer? Okay, Dilum, yes. Um, there comes a time when, after a very long period has passed, a fourth sun appears. When this happens, the great lakes from which the rivers originate, the Anothakta, uh, Siha Papata, Siha Papata, Rathakara, Rathakara, Karnamunda, Kanya Buddha, Kunala, Nanda, Chaddanta, Danta, Chaddanta, and Ma Mandaki, Mandaki, uh, wither away and dry up, and are no more. So impermanent are conditions. So unstable. So unstable. So unreliable. This is quite enough for you to become dis disillusioned, dispassionate, and freed regarding all conditions. Very good. So I think these are the names of the great lakes that are originated from the Mount Himalayan, I think, Anotatta, Sihapapata, Otakara, and maybe like uh, the, the lakes uh, bigger than the uh, Lake Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and all. Uh, I think Buddha talk, is talking about the lakes uh, bigger than even those lakes, okay? Mm -hmm. In Himalayan area. So everything will disappear, wither away and dry up. Okay, next. There comes a time when, after a very long period has passed, a fifth sun appears. When this happens, the water in the ocean sinks, but a hundred leagues. It sinks by two, three, four, five, six, or even seven hundred leagues. The water that remains in the ocean is all, only seven palm trees deep. It's six, five, four, three, two, or even one palm tree deep. The water that remains in the ocean is only seven fathoms deep. It's six, five, four, 
three to one or even half a fathom deep. It's waist high, knee high, or even ankle high. It's even the time in the autumn's autumn when the rain falls heavily and water remains here and there in the cow's half prints. In the same way, water in the ocean remains here and there in puddles like cow's half prints. When fifth sun appears, there, there's not even enough water in the great ocean to wet a toe joint. So impermanent, so impermanent are conditions. So unstable. Stable, so, so unreliable. This is quite enough for you to become disillusioned, dispassionate, and freed regarding all conditions. So, so, so that's the amazing knowledge of the Buddha. Did you think that the, the ocean water is permanent? No, Swami. Okay, that's also impermanent. The huge amount of water in the great ocean will disappear one day at the arising of the uh, fifth sun, okay, fifth sun. And then, that's not the end. Now, there is no water in the ocean. The whole uh, earth is like a desert now. Okay, what happens next? I will read Vante. Okay. There there comes a time when after a very long period has passed, a sixth sun appears. When this happens, this great earth and Sinaru, the king of mountains, smoke and smolder and give off fumes. It's like when a potter's kiln is first kindled and it smokes and smolders and gives off fumes. In the same way, this great earth and Sinaru, the king of mountains, smoke and smolder and give off fumes. So impermanent are conditions, so unstable, so unreliable. Okay, keep reading. There comes a time when, after a very long period has passed, a seventh sun appears. When this happens, this great earth and Sinaru, the king of mountains, erupt in one burning mass of fire. And as they blaze and burn, the flames are swept by the wind as far as the Brahma realm. Sinaru, the king of mountains, blazes and burns, crumbling as it's overcome by the great fire. And meanwhile, mountain peaks a hundred leagues high, or two, three, four, or five hundred leagues high, disintegrate as they burn. And when the great earth and Sinaru, the king of mountains, blaze and burn, no soot or ash is found. It's like when G or oil blaze and burn and neither ashes nor soot are found. In the same way, when the great earth and Sinaru, the king of mountains, blaze and burn, no soot or ash is found. So impermanent are conditions, so unstable are conditions, so unreliable are conditions. This is quite enough for you to become disillusioned dispassionate and freed regarding all conditions. Yes. Mendicant. Would you like me to continue? Yes, please. Mendicants, who would ever think or believe that this earth and Sinaru, the king of mountains, will burn and crumble and be no more, except for one who has seen the truth? Once upon a time, there was a teacher called Suneta. He was a religious founder and was free of sensual desire. He had many hundreds of disciples. He taught them the path to rebirth in the company of Brahma. Those who totally understood Suneta's teachings were, when their body broke up after death, reborn in, good, in a good place, the company of Brahma. Of those who didn't totally understand Suneta's teachings, some, when their body broke up after death, were reborn in the company of the gods who control the creations of others. 
Some were reborn in the company of the gods who love to create. Some with the joyful gods, some with the gods of Yama, some with the gods of the 33, and some with the gods of the four great kings. Some were reborn in the company of well-to-do aristocrats or Brahmins or householders. Then the teacher Sunita thought, it's not proper for me to be reborn in the next life in exactly the same place as my disciples. Why don't I further develop love? Then Sunita developed love for seven years. So and here, uh, let me uh, pause here. Something. So uh, love here means the metta, okay? Loving kindness. So he's, he's going to practice loving kindness meditation and this is the time period when there was no Buddha available in the world and this is the name of a, a different religious teacher but now he is going to practice loving kindness meditation by his own and um, uh, yeah having done so he did not return to this world for seven aeons of cosmic expansion and contraction as the cosmos contracted he went to the realm of streaming radiance as it expanded, he was reborn in an empty mansion of Brahma. There he was Brahma, the great Brahma, the undefeated, the champion, the universal seer, the wielder of power. He was Saka, Lord of Gods, 36 times. Many hundreds of times he was a king, a wheel-turning monarch, a just and principled king. His dominion extended to all four sides. He achieved stability in the country and he possessed the seven treasures. He had over a thousand sons who were valiant and heroic, crushing the armies of his enemies. After conquering this land girt by sea, he reigned by principle without rod or sword. Yet even though Seneta lived so long, he was not exempt from rebirth, old age and death. He was not exempt from sorrow, lamentation, pain, dejection, and despair, I say. Why is that? Because of not understanding and not penetrating four things. What for? Noble ethics, immersion, wisdom, and freedom. So those are the uh, sila, samadhi, panya, vimukti. Those are the four things. Sila, virtue. Samadhi, concentration, Panya, wisdom, Vimutti, liberation. These noble ethics, immersion, wisdom, and freedom have been understood and comprehended. Craving for continued existence has been cut off. The attachment to continued existence is ended. Now there will be no more future lives. This is what the Buddha said. Then the Holy One, the teacher, went on to say, Ethics, immersion and wisdom, and the supreme freedom, these things have been understood by Gotama the renowned. And so the Buddha, having insight, explained this teaching to the mendicants. The teacher has made an end of suffering. Seeing clearly, he is extinguished. Sadhu, sadhu. Isn't that amazing to hear that at least one extraordinary being got the opportunity to be liberated from this misery. Yes, like not, not only one person, then he helped many, many other people, right? To be liberated from this misery. And, but we are still in that, we are stuck in that. So this is the only opportunity if you are going to find the, the way out in this life, right? At least the foundation of that path. Okay, so now, Harry, what do you think about the future of the earth? Is it going in a good way? Yeah, it sounds very pessimistic, eh? <laughs> but then, but then with no, all it's the- it's realistic, it's the realistic. <laughs> yeah, I know, Bante. But then what I'm saying is uh, even, even just a, uh, a second sun comes out, you know, appears, uh, we are all gone anyway, right? Yeah. 
So it's just a. But what happened next, Bante? So if uh, if we were gone and then and uh, we still have re rebirth. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why I I told you I called it another discourse from the Buddha. So otherwise it would be very easy. Like you just need to wait until uh, everything disappears and you think that's the end of your cycle of rebirth. <laughs> That's that is easy, not that easy. Even though the earth ends, your cycle doesn't end like that. You have to follow the noble eightfold path, realize the four noble truths, and that's the only way. And and Bante, that means the human world is gone, but then yeah. could be rebirth into hell. Yeah, in, in, in other heaven. worlds, yeah. Yeah, I, in other worlds. Yeah, in yeah. other worlds. Yeah. Thank you, Bante. Yeah. And also, did you uh like this is something um in addition to that explanation about the disappearance of the earth, did you uh, hear that part of the Buddha explaining about a, a previous religious teacher named Sunetta? And he practiced loving kindness meditation for uh, seven years in a stretch. And as a result, he became uh, the, the God, the Brahma. And 36 times he became the God Chakka, the leader of the gods. And he became human kings, universal uh, monarch and like that many times but finally Buddha thought even though he had such a great merit accumulated through that loving kindness meditation practice uh, still he was not freed from existence he was not freed from rebirth he was not freed from old age not freed from death do you remember that because that teacher Sunit that was so fortunate to follow that like very deep jhanas uh, produced from the loving kindness meditation, but still he didn't know about sila samadhi panya vimukti. Those things are taught to the world only by a fully enlightened Buddha. Unfortunately, at that time, there wasn't a Buddha. But now we are learning the teachings of the Buddha. Do you see the value of this? Even, even very smart people, very intelligent people were there in the world before the Buddha, but still they couldn't find the Noble Eightfold Path. They couldn't discover that. They couldn't realize the Four Noble Truths as a result. So maybe now, even though they were very smart and very wise, when they were in the human world, because they did not come across the teachings of the Buddha about the reality of the life. Maybe now they are in hell. Who knows? Maybe they are now around us as animals. We don't know what happened to this religious teacher, Sunetta. That's, that's the danger of this sansara. Like, can you understand the fortune of a person who comes across the teachings of the Buddha? It happens after a very long time. Like even those people with like very advanced wisdom, they cannot discover the Four Noble Truths. They cannot discover the Noble Eightfold Path. On the other hand, there are some very humble, innocent people. They don't have that much of like amazing wisdom but due to the fact that they come across the teachings of the fully enlightened Buddha they even go beyond those very wise people in terms of escaping from all the bad destinations isn't that amazing like do you think that you have a wisdom compared to the wisdom like the wisdom that Sunetta the teacher Sunetta had I don't think so. No. But still, don't we have the opportunity to gain, to earn a security which the, the teacher Sunetta couldn't gain? Yes, Bhante. Isn't that remarkable? It only happens because of that fortune somebody gets to uh, come across the teachings of the Buddha. Mm -hmm. It's priceless. So we are more fortunate. Than Sunetta. If we are well established in the path, otherwise there is no difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, we listen to the teachings, we listen to the teachings, we write it down, 
we don't follow it we don't understand it and the the same way we were born we are going to end our life there is no difference All right yeah, it's up to us buddha is not watching or us he extinguished he attained nibbana final nibbana it's up to us okay so that's that's the story of the impermanence of the external earth element so he went uh, a long journey with the with this earth to understand the impermanence of the external external earth element right so but if we try to escape from or liberated from this cycle um we need to understand so that is the meaning of this just this sentence what is that sentence now both the internal and earth internal earth element and external earth element are simply earth element that's to understand just that one sentence we learned so many things about the impermanence of the earth external earth element so that's that's how impermanent is um external earth element is and and that should be seen is at actually with proper wisdom the all these parts solid parts of the body this body this earth element is not mine not i am not myself this should be seen with proper wisdom and what happens if we see that this is this is what happens okay these are the beautiful benefits of developing wisdom who is going to read <clears throat> so you can find all this information in one sutta okay <laughs> so i already used about four suttas to learn about these things these beautiful things so this is also from a different sutta our main sutta is kundaliya sutta and we also use datu vibhanga sutta we, we just finished satta suryugamana sutta and now we are on the mahahati padopama sutta majjhimika 28 so this is from that sutta so this is what happens if we see um the both the internal and the uh, external earth element are simply earth element and not my not i am not myself if we develop uh this meditation um the same way as buddha instructed this is the result these are some of the results who is going to read Bhante, can i read mm -hmm. yeah catherine if others abuse attack harass and trouble that man again they understand this painful feeling born of ear contact has arisen in me that's dependence not independent dependent on what dependent on contact they see that contact feeling perception choices and consciousness are impermanent based on the, that element alone the mind becomes eager confident settled and decided sounds nice okay so there is something very important here beautiful uh, result coming from the vipassana knowledge so this is the result of a vipassana knowledge so it is it is not a very like uh not an ordinary thing the result coming from the uh, vipassana meditation is not only like sen uh, some knowledge about sensation and some knowledge about you know aches and pains of the body it's not that simple it's the the these results become a part of your day to day living if the vipassana knowledge is um truly developed and what happens buddha teaches if others abuse attack harass harass you and you don't get angry that's the true path it's not like we go go for a retreat and we, we practice vipassana and only for 10 days we are calm and peaceful we go home we go to the workplace fight with the others and you know even for little little things we are irritated that's not that's not what we need yeah. this is what happens with the true vipassana knowledge if somebody insults you it calls you abuses you 
you understand now your mindfulness is sharpened so that you understand okay now instead of getting angry at that person yelling back at that person or instead of hurting that person doing something against that person instantly you your vipassana knowledge about the dependent origination appears here now this is what buddha here buddha here links your vipassana knowledge of the elements to the vipassana knowledge of the dependent origination paticca samuppada so what happens here is that when your knowledge based on the elements are very well developed suddenly when somebody um yells at you criticizes or insults you you understand okay now a painful feeling has born of born in me and it has been like this painful feeling born of ear contact mm-hmm. this is dependent dependent means this has arisen due to many causes and conditions mm-hmm. dependent on impermanent contact what is the contact and you have learned it before that's how this knowledge comes to you and what what have you learned you have learned that contact here ear contact means the com- meeting of ear sound and the consciousness okay and and you understand this contact contact ear contact is impermanent feeling this painful feeling that has arisen now is impermanent perception of that sound of that person you 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 perceive that person as an enemy or um or um, somebody against me that perception is impermanent choices means volition sankhara volitions now so many a uh, stream of volitions is arising in me now about that person who yelled at me and you understand all these volitions are impermanent and consciousness is impermanent based on that element alone their mind becomes eager confident settled and decided that means you don't get angry you are settled because now you are seeing the truth you remember if i want to escape from this sansara i have to follow the instructions of the buddha i should not get angry at this person all these things are impermanent conditioned things is that easy to do not at all bante <laughs> one day one day this should happen bante i have a question uh huh In this practice when one is um, experiencing anger or anger you see anger arising can you not flip that into loving kindness because you realized it and you understand uh the causes and conditions that are causing it but you instead turn it around in its on its head and then um radiate kindness and yeah. compassion yeah that that's that's also another way another way of um following the path and we are soon going to learn about it okay thanks man <laughs> okay so it's is here just here just below this paragraph okay uh so who is going to read next and i can read again mm-hmm. yeah, okay others might treat that mendicant with disliking loathing and detestation striking them with fist stone sticks and swords they understand this body is such that fist stone sticks and swords strike it but the buddha has said in the simile of the soul even if low down bandits were to severe you limp from limp anyone who had a male- malevolent thought on that account would not be following my instructions my energy shall be roused up and unflagging my mindfulness established and lucid my body tranquil and undisturbed and my mind immersed in samadhi gladly now let fist stone sticks and swords strike this body for this is how the instructions of the buddhas are followed sadhu 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 okay have you read anything like this in any other book like buddha teaches even 
when your body is cut piece by piece with the with the double sided saw by the robbers they lay you down and with a very sharp blade they cut your body into pieces what will happen are you going to die with the angry mind about those people who are cutting your body buddha teaches even at that time my disciples my followers should not get angry at those robbers now do you see the metta in the mind of the buddha the limitless metta because buddha so if you were to die at that time with that angry mind you are going to fall into a bigger danger it it is just you lost your body in this life but you are going to be reborn in hell because you you died with an angry mind only buddha saw that so buddha asks you not to get angry even at that time so that's called the simile of the saw this is a very famous simile in the discourses and um lots of arahants and lighten monks talk about this simile and they have practiced that simile in their path so and buddha teaches if you think like that okay what is that my great teacher the supreme buddha has instructed me not to get angry even at such a very difficult situation so what is this thing that i am getting angry now it's a very very small thing okay i should not get angry because this is the mind i should train and buddha teaches if you think like that it, will there anything in this world that can make you angry and the monks replied no bhante if we practice our minds with that simile in our mind we won't find anything in this world that can make us angry do you understand okay so i don't think you can find such an instruction in any other book metta to such an extent loving kindness even to the people who are trying to kill you not trying to kill you who are killing you mm-hmm. right yes that's why people like buddhism that's why people like buddha that's why people like buddha's teachings it's is all it's about peace forgiveness patience limitless compassion harmony right that that's why people like like buddhism <clears throat> usually people just react with vengeance bante right hmm? in that in that kind of situation people just uh, react by you know thinking to to re- normal thing is uh, getting People yeah hate hate yeah. anger so <clears throat> so the true vipassana knowledge uh, helps you to be patient be gentle be kind be nice to others be helpful be generous uh, uh, very kind and also understanding the, true nature of the world the true vipassana knowledge so that that's how the knowledge of the elements meditation vipassana meditation linked to the dependent origination meditation okay so do you have any questions maybe i uh, messed up with the time the vanco time is still 3:20 pm so <laughs> That's okay, Bhante. Okay. We're studying. I do, have, I do have a question. Yes. Uh, given, given what we learned today and that the earth and, and all of the elements will uh, disappear, as Buddhists, are we being hypocrites or wasting our time by trying to preserve the um, environment, like by recycling and doing things like that to... prolong the the existence 
Do you, uh, is there any way that we can um, make good karma by not helping the environment? Do we make any good karma by not helping the environment? No. No. Uh, make any good karma, right? No, uh, I agree. But if we did nothing, would we earn, like we wouldn't earn any karma, there would be... I think, uh, I think it's a two, two different uh, kind of levels we are talking here, two different levels. So like four monks, Buddha has talk, taught a lot about preserving the trees, plants and earth. And I think, I don't think those kind of instructions in, in any other, in any other um, book or whatever, like Buddha has instructed the monks not to even this, uh, 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 a plot, uh, not to even destroy a leaf of a tree. Monks are not allowed to pick a leaf of a tree. They are not allowed to cut even a small branch of a tree, not let alone cutting a tree. So then all the monks all over the world, they are not even touching a tree with the intention of cutting it. Like they are, they are not allowed to cut. If they cut, they break a precept. It's a precept, one of the precepts out of the 227 precepts. And the other thing is monks are no, not allowed to um, urinate or defecate on water, on rivers. So I think monks are helping a lot to preserve trees, plants, earth. And monks are not allowed to dig the earth. That's another precept. So the one precept is uh, they are not allowed to cut plants or trees. They are not allowed to dig earth. That's another precept. They're not allowed to um, pollute the water uh, by defecating and urinating. Uh, and also monks are not allowed, not allowed to spittle on water. So isn't there some, some beautiful message here? Isn't there some, something beautiful here that we don't understand? Like how much the like Buddha cared about the beauty of the environment? I, I agree. And just for my understanding, um, so we should respect and preserve what we have, uh, knowing that it is all impermanent. Mm -hmm. Is that a correct yeah. understanding? Yeah, it's, it's, that's completely true. And, and also it's true levels. Like one, in one level, Buddha has talked about protecting the environment, preserving the environment, and not, not, not allowing even to cut a branch of a tree so that we understand how Buddha has um, um, taken actions and steps to preserve the environment on one hand, right? On mm -hmm. one level. And Buddha also um, asked people to protect all the animals, even a teeny tiny creature. Mm. Like animals are part of the environment, part of part of the the existence. So, he, like, is there anybody in this world that that um, has asked us not to kill even a mosquito, even an ant. Like sometimes we see some kids who come to the monastery when they see some worms, like some small insects, and they don't think, like, they just think they don't have life, they don't have hearts, they don't have conscious, consciousness, and we learned in our school to kill them. They just use their, you know, leg and kill them. Like in such an environment, such a world, the Buddha asked us not to even 
to take the life of a teeny tiny ant, mm -hmm. a mosquito, let alone protecting the bigger lives, bigger animals. I think Buddha has taken all the steps to protect the environment, to protect the animals, to protect the, uh, all the humans, like even from the very first establishment of the consciousness of a being in a womb. We call embryo, right? And Buddha says you should not kill. So that is one level of the amazing like um, teachings of the Buddha about taking care of the environment, taking care of the animals, taking care of the humans and taking care of all beings. And when we go deeper and deeper in the Vipassana knowledge, and that's the knowledge we should gain by under, as, as Barry uh, wanted to understand and wanted to remember, um, we, we understand the impermanent nature of everything. So we live with that understanding and there is no harm of that. At the same time, even though things are impermanent, it's very clear that we are not allowed to destroy that. So in the Thank ordinary you. aspect of the things and also in the advanced as aspect of the things, the Buddha has realized everything perfectly that, that, that I see when I read the discourses. Do you see that? What do you think about Barry? Thank you, very good answer. Bante, uh, may, may I share, uh, I, will, I just thought of a simile, okay? Mm -hmm. So maybe let's not talk about a big environment, you know? So how about our own home? So we, we live in our home, we definitely want our home to be clean, to protect our home, try to make it, uh, you know, safe to, to stay while we still own and live in the home. Even though one day the home will turn down when it goes old, right? So I, I just thought of this simile to what uh, we were discussing about environment protection. Yeah. yeah. So it's always good to keep things organized, tidy, nice, clean. At the same time, we understand the impermanence of the things because the destruction of the things, um, it's not going to help us to understand the impermanence of the things. Otherwise, the people who destroy things, destroy buildings using weapons are the ones who understand the impermanence first, right? But they are the greedy, the greediest people, right? Uh, try to destroy things, destroy lives. That's not the path. Very good. So we are going to do the merit sharing. Oh, so. so today we learned uh, only a uh, a part of the one part of the element meditation we learned about the earth element part and we are going to learn three more um, segments of the element meditation i think uh, you were able to learn a lot from the data uh, vibhanga sutta maha atipadopama sutta um kundaliya sutta and we learned all those things from the uh, the original discourses of the Buddha. We also practice meditation, observe precepts, discuss the Dhamma, and in many ways we generate a powerful good karma. We share all the good karma first, uh, with our teacher, Lupa Sadhu. We share merit with all the devas. Sadhu. We share merit with our parents, teachers, family members, sons and daughters, and with all beings around the world. 
May all of them enjoy long life, good health. May all of them have the opportunity to learn these beautiful teachings and follow the path to true happiness. Sorry.